Bill Maher says, be very careful with the censorship game you're playing because it can come back and bite you in the butt when the administration changes, right? So you see Bill Maher coming on and some people are saying, well, Bill Maher is becoming too conservative. You know, Bill Maher is becoming way too conservative. He went out there one time, he said, look, I took the vaccines, I took it and I got COVID. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I, I did what I was told to do and I still got, so you kind of start to see some of that stuff taking place. Because he's True. starting to call out the people on the left just as much as he would typically call out the people on the right. Yeah, he just he did says, a thing about that this, this past week. He says 30 years ago, the reason why yeah. comedians do well making fun of the right is because that was funny. Yeah. He says, try making fun of Pelosi. What the hell are you going to say about Pelosi? He says, but today, yes. today's left is making it easy for the right to make fun of the Correct. left. He specifically so, said, I haven't changed. I'm still the pot smoking, yeah. non-married, making fun of You've everybody. Changed. You've changed. Yeah, so, exactly. So, so the only thing I'm saying that my point only the only point I'm making to you is, you know, again going back to the fact that the whistleblower who comes like Snowden. Yep. Remember when he came up with the thirty thousand emails and people were like, "Well, this is not." Cuomo said, "This is not the right thing to do." Yeah. You know, th th this is just not right. You don't do that kind of stuff. Some of this information doesn't protect the level of hypocrisy yes. on both sides against each other when they use the tactics against each other. That's when the American voter, who I believe, James, America's run by the twelve percent of voters. Okay. Not the ones that, you know, they're going to, when you're saying identity, identity politics, those on one side that no matter what you tell them, they're going to vote left. Those you're, on one side that no wrong. matter what you tell them, they're going to vote right. I think America's run by 12%. Yeah, I think you're right. That 12% right. is who we have to win. If we win the 12% over and they sit there and say, you know what? I don't know if I like those two stories, James, did, but this one, I kind of have to agree with them. Well, your, 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 your point about leaks, I, I, there's a part of this book, American Muckraker, where I talk about this, this idea of leaks, whistleblowers. And, and, and I think the, 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 the distinction, the qualifiers, if you can see the information yourself. So Snowden, when he brought those documents, you could see the documents, right? You weren't really relying upon Ed Snowden's credibility as a witness. The documents were self-evident. My problem is when the, when the anonymous sources Right, say well, you know people familiar with the matter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These pe I think I think you have a point. Yeah. Uh, sources familiar with the matter. Uh, we don't have any reason to trust the Washington Post when they tell us that. We don't know who these people are. So I, I agree with you if they don't show us the evidence, okay? And, a, and an analogy I would draw is when you use an anonymous source, which Veritas doesn't really, I don't think I've ever, ever reported something without showing you the evidence. I don't say, well, you have to believe me because I say so. When, as a journalist, when you say you have to believe me because I say so, you're withdrawing from the ATM of your credibility. But you've got to make deposits sometimes into the ATM. Deposits, evidence. But the New York Times and Washington Post don't actually give you any evidence. Here's an example. The Trump tax return story. That, this was a story about a year and a half ago that was concurrent to one of our stories that we did. The New York Times published a story, about, but they didn't print one document. They didn't show you any pictures. They didn't show you any evidence. They asked you to believe them because they are the New York Times. When I sued the New York Times for defamation, it came out in court, in court documents, in the deposit, in the discovery rather, in the, in the uh, answer to our defamation lawsuit, it came out that they admitted they got the facts wrong in the article and they refused to update their article. That means that right now on the internet, there's an article, it's on Wikipedia, Facebook uses it as the fact check, that's wrong, and they admitted in court it's wrong, but it has not been updated. Now, what is that if not disinformation? So when they accuse Joe Rogan of disinformation, the New York Times in court saying we got it all wrong, and they haven't fixed the article which remains on the internet. It's literally an Orwellian dystopia. So when they say, believe us, because people are familiar with the matter, tell us that this is so, there's no reason for you to believe them unless you can see it for yourself. So again, the rule is, and I write about this book, this is I'm, I'm creating a rules for journalism. Don't trust the anonymous sources unless they show you, unless they've given you the actual raw evidence and have, have a track record of showing you raw evidence every once in a while. So if you enjoyed this little short segment from the podcast that we did, here's another short segment to watch. Or if you wanna see the entire podcast, click over here. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.